All right, let's talk about Russell Wilson, quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers, which, like, I think a lot of people are speculating he's going to be the starter. I don't know if it's, like, official that it's going to be him or uh, Fields. I know there's been sort of reports, but reports can sometimes be misleading. So I'm interested in what exactly is going to happen here with Russell Wilson. If he does end up being a starter, what can he still do? Just in general, you know, I already kind of made a video comparing him to Fields, but I kind of want to make a video just breaking him down himself and kind of what he can and what he can't do. So let's start off with this play. It's going to be, uh, you know, uh, the way it works towards that edge rusher that I've highlighted is there is a guy who's going to chip him and then go out and run a route, uh, and then the left tackle will take over. Wilson takes the snap on this one, and there is going to eventually be pressure. It was, you know, again, they had the double team there, so that kind of slowed things down, but eventually it is coming. So for Wilson, this is a tough situation, and I do have to wonder, you know, I think the offensive line at times played well last year, and I wonder if got younger guys just getting a year older, how much that could help, but they did lose a good interior offensive lineman as well. There could be some quick pressure, and Wilson's ability to get out of pressure could be a real benefit. As you see, watch him kind of scramble outside there. He is going to then throw off balance and make something happen. And I do wonder a little bit, you know, I think about Kenny Pickett. I thought Kenny Pickett at times did do a pretty good job at making something happen once the play broke down. He had his other issues, and even that wasn't totally consistent. But I do wonder if that's a missing element that could really help out the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. That's something that Mason Rudolph really didn't bring to the table. Now, something like this, so it's going to be a blitz that the Lions are going to uh, dial up here. I thought the Lions did a pretty good job at dialing up blitzes, but that's a conversation for another day. Uh, so, blitz is going to you know, come here. Look at how when this play begins, you're going to see that Wilson's going to scramble outside, and you see right here there is pressure. So, okay, kind of similar to last time. The pressure is disrupting the play. First read wasn't open. Can Wilson make something happen? Well, he does get rid of the football while going down. That's not easy to do. There's a actually a pretty solid window here to try and make this throw work. Can Wilson hit this? Well, the throw is definitely a bit high and ends up being incomplete. Maybe there could have potentially been a catch, but I really don't think so. I think he would have been out of bounds either way. So, uh, you know, not the perfect throw, and it's hard to blame Wilson for that, right? He was under pressure. I'm just kind of using this play to explain that, like, I think Wilson is good under pressure, but everyone is still human under pressure, and there still are going to be, you know, you're going to get worse once you're under pressure. That's just kind of the way it works. But again, something like this, where it's a third down and 10 against the Detroit Lions, and it's going to, uh, you know, the way this play is going to work is that it's actually going to be right over the middle against zone coverage that Wilson wants to look towards. However, when it begins, again, there's kind of an exotic pressure here by Detroit, picked up relatively nicely, but, it, you know, play takes a little bit longer to develop. There is going to be pressure in Wilson's face. And I do have to say, you know, there's kind of been this narrative about Russell Wilson that, when he was at his best, all he could do was just scramble outside and make throws down the field. That's all he was ever good for. I disagree. When he was at his best, he was a great game manager on top of that stuff. Like, I think one year he was Pro Football Focus's highest rated quarterback. If you know anything about how that stat is compiled, it's usually guys with very high batting averages that get, you know, high up on that ranking. And when I watched tape from him from years past, that's what I saw as a guy who was consistently making the right decisions, even when he's you know, under pressure like Wilson is right now. Watch how he's able to, while under pressure, flip the ball to Judy, who picks up a first down right there. That is what Wilson, at his best, could bring to the table, was being able to just make these kind of things happen. Even going over here to unique ways, something like this, where it's going to be man coverage in sort of an end zone type situation. You see the route that he wants to look towards. Okay, makes sense. This is the route that can work on third and goal. Again, they're kind of in a tough spot here on a uh, you know down 21, nothing. So while it's third and goal, might as well be second and goal. Doubt you're kicking a field goal here. Russell Wilson takes a snap, but wait, there is once again an unblocked man who's going to get through towards Wilson. Now, uh, you know, again, is this open? Well, kind of. Like, this is probably the type of throw you'd want to make in a typical situation. Give Cortland Sutton a chance with a jump ball here, especially down three scores. You gotta, gotta make stuff happen. Now's the time to take a chance. But watch how Wilson does it. 
watch how much air Wilson's going to put on this ball, giving Sutton a chance to, you know, get over there. He does go up and make the play, so he's the one who made the play. Give him credit. But Wilson is someone who will give his players a chance, right? In Seattle, that's what he did with, you know, Doug Baldwin and Tyler Lockett and then DK Metcalf once he came along. Is He trusted his receivers to make plays, and I do wonder, could we get some George Pickens highlights because Wilson will give him a chance to make plays? Going over here, could there be some sort of bailouts sometimes in certain scenarios where something like this, again, highlighting the Detroit player who's going to be blitzing on this play, watch as when Wilson takes the snap, he is going to immediately be in pressure and, you know, he wasn't looking, he was looking on the other side of the field, so this makes it tougher, but again, here is some of the value of Russell Wilson. Watch him while under pressure, have that kind of escape valve to flip it to a tight end and they pick up a first down on that play and then some. So again, with Pittsburgh, I do think this kind of thing could happen uh, from time to time. I do think there could be some bad plays and bad situations that Wilson is in, and I think he can get out of them. Now, I think you could argue that, you know, Fields might be a little bit better at that kind of stuff than Wilson. But again, I've already made a video kind of talking about all that. Check it out on the channel if you haven't already. I do still think Wilson is good at this stuff and can make this kind of thing work. So, okay, if, well, you know, Wilson's a pretty solid game manager and is pretty good at the, you know, other stuff. Well, what's his weaknesses? Again, I don't think he has a ton of weaknesses. I think he's a solid quarterback. I think he's like a top 15 quarterback. Maybe, maybe that's a bit high, maybe top 20, but you know, he's good. He's a solid quarterback. Although going over to something like this, I have to be honest, there were plays with him where I was just kind of like, what happened there? Like, like this one, the one-on-one -on -one matchup on the outside, trying to get into the end zone. Wilson takes the snap. He is going to run back and then eventually fire this one down the field. And right here, there is a window to make this throw. There, there just is. Like these, these are the types of throws Wilson used to make 10 out of 10 times. However, I guess this is the 11th one because it's just a bit too high. And maybe it's just a timing thing. Maybe he just never really got the rhythm down of being in, you know, new offenses. Maybe it's the kind of thing where he was in one situation his whole career and then having to learn different offenses and back-to-back -back years was tough, but that's not going to get any easier. Going to have to learn another offense now, so that's a difficulty. But honestly, when I watch Russell Wilson, he just looks like a watered-down version of himself. I, when, I don't look at him and say, oh, wow, he sucks and can't play. I don't really see a lot of these narratives like, oh, this is where he got way worse. I don't really see that to be the case. I just kind of see him to be kind of slightly worse in every aspect. It's so weird with Wilson where Early on this season, I remember I made a video saying, like, Wilson's actually playing pretty well this year. People were kind of saying the Broncos need to move off of him. He, he stinks. You know, they need to get rid of him. Uh, and then he kept playing exactly as well as he was playing. But then the Broncos started winning, and everyone was like, oh, wow, Russell Wilson's turned it around. Because, again, quarterback wins tends to be a stat that people uh, grab onto as, you know, unreal, as odd as it could be. I do wonder if Denver ended up making the playoffs, would Wilson have been ran out of town even if he played just as well as he did? I actually don't think that that would have happened, but because uh, they then lost a few games, again, I thought Wilson was mostly consistent last year. I don't think he like played well and then started sucking, uh, but that's why they kind of said, like, okay, let's run him out of town. So I do think for Pittsburgh, again, getting paying him for very little money it's a lot better than some of these other options out there. So I do think there's a lot of good value in this move. And I think it was a really smart move by them. Even if he ends up being a backup, he's the best backup in football at this point, probably. So, you know, really good stuff there by Pittsburgh. That's kind of what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.